Friday, August 14th, and I'm showing just above freezing. Manny has 37 on his digital thermometer, so I just take them both and just say it's about 35. Either way, it is cold. Manny's bundled up. I'm bundled up. And last night, even though it was about 50 when we went to bed, maybe a little bit less, I was up till about 11, and I was just in short sleeve shirt. But I went to bed, my feet got cold, and they have not warmed up since. I've never had that. My feet were cold all night and now in the morning. So once we get moving, I'm turning that heater on full blast at my feet. But usually I get them to warm up a couple of hours later, but uh, not last night. It was... It was chilly. It definitely felt cold in the cab. It never showed below 50, but for whatever reason, it definitely felt a lot colder than the other nights. So anyway, we are getting ready for breakfast and we are going to start route two. We only have two more routes to go. So hopefully it's another day like yesterday. Yesterday was awesome in a lot of different ways. Very easy, nice drive. So probably expect more of that on route one and two and enjoy the last couple of days here on the Continental Divide. Check that out. That tree is already starting to change colors on August 14th. That's how chilly it's getting around here. Kind of a nice relief. We are going to be hoping for this when we get back to North Carolina and I go to Pennsylvania, I'm sure. But it's really interesting to have such a variation in weather between now and a few days from now. probably about 10 to 15 miles yet from Seeley Lake and that will end Route 3. We will then be on Route 2 so we are down to our last two routes and we'll continue to climb more north into Montana. From here we go to Columbia Falls. I actually had to look that up because I didn't know and that route is a distance of 119 miles. And then the last route takes us by Glacier National Park. We're not actually going to go into the park. I've already been there two or three times in the last couple of years. So we're just going to continue to make our way up the side glacier to Eureka, go above Eureka towards the Canadian border, and that will be the end of the trip. So we need to gas up at Seeley Lake, wherever that may be, and we'll keep pushing through after that. We just left Seely Lake uh, about 15 minutes ago and we are now on Route 2. So we have about 30 to 40 miles of this particular road before we get back on dirt road. I'm not going to complain about that because uh, it's nice to be able to have my windows down. I love old buildings like that. That is just so cool. So I'll enjoy smells of the outside while well, I don't have to have my window rolled up and the views it got some really pretty pine forests around here along with the mountains in the background so we should be able to finish the route based on it only being 1230 now it's 120 miles 40 of that will be paved road and the other 80 will probably be Road, so uh, we are about to get on Fatty Piper Forest Service Road and when we were on paved road you saw mountains all around and for the past half hour since we got on dirt road it has been nothing more than this. So it has been quite boring. I would have to say up to this point this is the least filmed day.
So Manny decided to pull over to make some coffee since he was getting tired. I thought I was the only one, but I have really been dragging today. And not only is this a nice view, but it's the only view we've seen in about two hours. Manny's gonna finish his coffee. I made a couple of PB&J sandwiches and enjoy the view while we can before we push on. So as a bonus to this stop, we actually found raspberries. We've been looking for them and haven't really found any yet. We see people picking stuff all over the place yesterday, but hadn't found anything ourselves. So that'll be nice. Alright, it is about 4.20 and we have been driving for about half an hour since our break and have decided that we're going to try to find a camp spot really early. We're near Swan Lake on the other side of the highway it looks like and we're hoping to find something with maybe an overlook but with this kind of terrain of the road just basically going through forest and no breaks or anything like that to see through of anything around us, I seriously doubt we're going to get a view of the lake. But we're going to give it a shot. He's got a couple of roads on Gaia that I'm not seeing on the GPS uh, that he's going to try to take and maybe that will help us out. Alright, so the road that Manny wanted to take was a bust. It was blocked off and had been used in a while and I'm even seeing roads here on my Garmin that are blocked off that are showing as roads on the Garmin. So. I told him, I mean, we're on a National Forest Road, it's 9745. I've been through a lot of National Forests, and I've had very little luck of finding campsites along National Forest Roads that are even halfway decent. Usually they're just a pull-off along the side of the road. These roads are used as access road for the National Forest Service, and sometimes through ways to get from one point to another. It's not very common that you have really nice, decent camp spots or little pull-off roads from these routes that I've noticed anyway. Maybe other people have had luck, but I've noticed this in dozens of national forests. Looking at the map, I mean, there is nothing. And then we're out of the national forest for a while. Uh, but there is a, a state park campground. I mean, it's a campground again, but uh, it's off uh, Road 35. It's right on the lake. I don't know. We can try it, see if they're not full on a Friday night. Well, we found our spot. Look at that lake view we got. And then also, look at the road that we've got. Here, wait for it. There you go. That's the sound we were looking for all day. So, this is one of the nicest views we've had of water, but we are stuck right by the road. We are near Big Fork, and this is a hot spot for a lot of vehicles on their way up the glacier, or Kalispell, or however you say it. So it is going to be a very noisy long night. I don't mind the traffic so much. Um, usually at night it calms down anyway, but not ideal. It was either this or we have to drive one more hour to get to National Forest area. The National Forest we just came from, there's really nothing there. We've been trying for well over an hour and a half and to no avail. So I've even leveled up in this little spot. I found it on iOverlander. Um, it did say it was right by the road. It definitely is. So seriously doubt we're going to be sitting out in our camp chairs. <laughs> overlooking this beautiful uh, spot of water here but it is what it is it's uh, we haven't finished the route yet we'll finish it tomorrow and then start route one hopefully the more north we get on the other side of glacier uh, the better off we'll be we just ended up in a really bad hot spot on a Friday so it is what it is and that's the night
So after calling around to some campgrounds, Manny was not able to find us a spot as of yet, but he just can't take the noise. So it looks like we're going to drive at least an hour to get to something else. So uh, I really don't want to stay here either, and I don't want to drive an hour, but driving an hour is probably the better option in the end because I don't know if I could even take this noise. It is There's so much traffic over there and so many loud trucks and whatnot, so I guess I need to uh, back off my go treads, stick them back up top, and we'll get a move on. Jewel Basin Road, and we went from like 4,000 feet to 5,300. We're not done climbing yet. It has been a lot of really steep inclines, but there is way more traffic than I'm comfortable with. And this dead ends what looks like to be at the very top of this mountain. And there's some really pretty views out the side here. But if there's camping allowed at the top, regardless if there's a party going on up there, we are staying, Manny said. So we'll see what's up here and hopefully it's not a bust, but either way we've got miles to go back down. So far, it's been a pretty drive, but uh, an interesting one. There were two spots on the way up here on the side of the road that had grassy areas that would fit both of our vehicles. So we've got options. We're up here. We are staying somewhere. So I guess this will be it. All right. So here is our killer campsite. I got to say, it is 10 times better than being by the side of the road. It's already freezing up here. My hands are getting cold. Try a hundred times better. <laughs> <laughs> There's our view of the mountaintop. And right up there is, I don't know, about half a mile up, maybe a quarter mile. The Camp Misery parking lot. So as you can see, we're pulled back here from the road a little bit. The traffic has already died down a lot and we probably won't see too many other cars until dawn when people start crawling back up here again. So sort of leveled up now that I look at that. It's not in the right direction, but that's okay. I'm too tired to move it. I will deal with it tonight. But yeah, so I'm not even going to do a whole lot. I'm going to chat with Manny a little bit, crawl inside and do some video editing and then call it a night. I need to eat. So I am kind of hungry and actually that was sitting in my cubby hole and is already warm from being next to the transmission, but I am going to watch your earphones, put it in there for 10 minutes and I bet you it'll be even warmer. But since I keep my food down here, that's my oil bottle that's now empty, Manny, found the place that took our oil. So I've got all my food in here or some of it now, I've been eating it. And that is right next to the transmission. So everything gets really warm during the day in there. And that's why I have residual heat in the evening and why it can be 50 degrees out here and 68 in there because that heat stays probably till about midnight. So it's kind of a nice way to warm up the Jeep. So I'm gonna eat that and then I will edit video. 